Recording. Okay. So, welcome to day number nine. So this is day number nine, and uh, the house is standing up. There. Looking at the videotape just a little bit over the last last two days, uh, it's pretty cool. What what's happened? I want to make sure I'm recording this. Um, yeah, I'm recording this. So two days ago, we were still finishing up the modules, including windows. So this is uh, our stack from the recent history of two days ago. Uh, still going at it. Some, I guess, some more window modules. So we finished those, uh, basically with a 36-inch rough opening. Uh, we built four of those, which were some of the last missing modules, as well as the cor actually corners we had missing after day seven, which in day eight actually. Wait, was that day eight in the morning that we? Uh, I'm getting lost on. D this is day seven, day I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. Day seven, we did the windows, but then we found that we still had like those corner modules left, which we did day eight with in the morning, uh, which was two days ago. Uh, and then... No, uh, yeah, the, day eight we did windows, day seven we did standard modules. Okay. Yeah, so uh, day seven, that's how the window goes in. You So just to review that process, if you're going to be building this, because this is pretty much all that you need and for the people who haven't done that it's it's useful to go through some of the steps so you've got the plywood inserted you've got the frame you've got the headers um, screwed on now we put the the house wrap on just to get around the detail of where the window goes in we cut out the square we stapled it we put flashing corners on the bottom where water can get into the window so that's that's a pretty much a dangerous point you cut the the house wrap at the very top because you don't want the house wrap to wick water underneath at the top and then we install the window screwed it down uh, put some protection on it uh, just just so it doesn't break and then we repeated that had some issues on here first of all you see that's upside down so there's an upside down bottom up here you see it's sticking out quite a bit it should actually be inside so there is upside down front and back to the windows that you have to pay attention to. Here's uh, some action with rollers, uh, getting the tape. So kind of missed that we put tape on. It's self-sealing tape. It's butyl tape where if you puncture through the, um, what is it called, the lip, the, what is that thing called, the the uh, the flange. The flange yeah. yeah, so you put the tape <coughs> wherever the flange pokes through, where you screw it down, you, you screw through the, both the house wrap and the tape so it's, it's supposed to be self-healing that that it wraps around the screw and you don't get moisture so then we took out to start taking out stuff to the side this is where still people were i think making the four corner modules on um day eight seven i think sorry seven uh, i don't know was six like six seven seven i think this was seven so we kind of that's the corner module time when we spend a bunch of the morning there okay but right after that we got up onto the roof to start installing so took out the tractor got the pe some people up there very easy with the tractor you just bump it up there and pretty much even without holding it you can slide the if you have a smooth side here you can actually slide the module right up and pretty much it kind of like fo even falls over you don't even have to do anything if you have a, a loader like that or people it would take a few people to get it do the equivalent of the tractor there but um, we put that up there um, what are some of the comments on working on the second floor I think definitely people are I saw that teams were more like six or seven people to make sure that the modules don't fall over mm -hmm. um, that's that's an issue to attend to with the windows yeah uh -huh. that, that was yep. with the windows before we launch into those comments would now be a good time to grab the right the food okay sure Sure. It's ready. One piece of bacon each. And um, how many are we feeding? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm getting my back. <laughs> yeah, I'll get that quick. So this will, went up relatively smoothly. Uh, the thing that we were fighting there was uh, actually back from the bottom of the bottom foundation where we have a large pad that wasn't necessarily all even. So some of the modules were a little bit uneven. We shimmed them up got things square we, we keep using the braces the braces are important because until the roof is capped this is pretty flexible uh, so 
we kept the braces on until the very end where we put on the roof uh, roof plywood where we made everything very stiff on top but here we're still still got them uh, one after another Let's see do we have some higher resolution <coughs> only rendered to 360p right now but it should be in HD in a little while um, so yeah oh yeah here was uh, when I was pushing it up I stuck the module in the top of the door and yeah if you're putting this up there make right. sure you don't catch that edge there because then you like lift up the house with the tractor right the tractor has <laughs> Uh, those cylinders there, they give mm -hmm. you like probably around 8,000 pounds of uplift, so you probably lift each one, both of them. Do you mind? Is a, yeah, is the a weight one. Uh, 8,000 pounds, about four tons. Yeah, those are. You see the cylinders move very slowly. They're pretty large. They're four inch, so they're, they're quite forceful. So here now we're at the top. Now that was day, day eight. Now, by the way, the 8,000, like if you're trying to lift something off the ground, I mean, the back would pull out before you lift 8,000. Right. So you have but some safety. But we do have like 2,000 pounds of weight on the back, so there's quite a bit of weight on it. Um, so you prob probably lift like maybe up to 4,000 or something before you lift, start lifting up. Um, so here on the second floor, we're all braced up. Uh, in the morning, I guess we were cutting the, as far as the workflow, we were cutting all the, truss the, the joists. So we were kind of quiet here for a little while. Uh, maybe move forward a little bit. And what are the next steps after that? So first thing we got up there is some of the top plates started going on. We had a bunch of scraps of two by six, so we just d did it. So making sure that we never end up like, you know, like right there, you're ending up at the middle of the module with Brian there, not on any of the seams, so we we're just trying to. Now that's a little close to the seam there, but uh, it shouldn't be that. Yeah, okay. Well, no, no, no. Sorry, that's yeah. middle. That was good. That was the middle of the panel. This, this is the seam. So the our minimum was six inches in uh, over a panel before we would like allow it over. Yeah. Just give you enough room. So we had like little gaps here and there, but overall for this practice build, in terms of a learning experience, it doesn't doesn't affect it. It would affect things like like air penetration and strength, yes. Like if you're talking about extreme events, of say like 90 mile an hour winds and stuff, you know, you might be concerned about that. We didn't use hurricane ties. We do have hurricane ties that we would typically put on. So now uh, I think that was lunch. And then after lunch, starting 10.05, so we should actually take a note of that number. We're finishing up the top plate here it looks like and when does the first joist come up so we probably would have the the joist on the long walls come up first and then span everything in the middle yeah we were measuring here so still measuring okay first here. one's coming up so I saw the the joist get lifted up first one okay there so we're at about 1039 uh, because I want to actually remember that 1039. How long did it actually take us to do both the joists and uh, the sheeting on top? So we ended up with a gap because one of our sides was over, like way over, maybe a couple of inches too long, whereas all the three other sides were pretty good. But we just left that. The, the joist actually was screwed into the end of that edge joist there. So it's okay but the weight of the of the joist is actually it's laying on top of the walls that's the load bearing part as far as just attaching them in the interim you're attaching through the plywood on the outside through through the edge joists into the into these and after that so after so you got the first joist coming up there you would have the hurricane tie which is this piece of metal that ties each of the joists down to the walls we didn't do that we don't have that here um, but I mean they come right up I mean you can have we had like two teams moving them up you could have three, four, five teams if you have enough ladders 
it's a question of ladders and people. As soon as we had a few joists, hey, let's get that plywood up there, no need to wait. Just get it right up there, fix the first one. The proper procedure is to do this one all the way to the end. Keep along the mid-marked line, which we had up there. Uh, we did not do that at this point. We stopped there and then we put this one on. That turned out to be wrong. This, the next one, this one had to be shifted a little bit because we forgot about that here. This one we had to actually move over. You'll see us probably taking that off. So we need to finish the joist first and then start putting the... You don't need to finish the joists. They're all still flexible. As long as they're marked at the two foot locations, this is all good. And the trick here is when you lay down the plywood, the joists start completely flexible. In the middle, you can move them a few inches. Mm -hmm. So align them, mark every two feet on a plywood to know where your two foot mark is. And then adjust the joist there, leave that mark there so the next guy over, the next piece of plywood over, knows where, where to screw in on top of the joists. So, <coughs> but look at that, that is, so what did we say? We said from 1039, let's go to a time-lapse calculator, and where did we end with everything? Um, so, I mean, the, the plywood, we had like 10 people up there, so that, that went quite fast at the very end. But there was, must have been a two-hour intermediate period when nothing was done between 1039 and, or at least. Well, no, at, from 1039. That was like you guys getting back from the Amish and then... Um, well, right here. We came back from a two. So, and like, way... Start getting up. Yeah. yeah, like, way late in the day, we got at it at 1039 or so, and then finished by... Oh, you're talking about the minutes. Uh, the, the minutes, and I was just, just trying to get, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. get a number Sorry. for the to total time, reading that, catching that information off the time lapse, which here was, interval was three seconds. So I'll show you how to do that. So at 12.56, we're done. All right, so let's go to a time lapse calculator. Where do you find that? Google it or go to the wiki. And there you will see, what do we do? So it's actually at the top of the page here. So uh, we're going to calculate the event duration. How long did it take us to do this? Shooting interval, three seconds, clip length. OK, so what was that? We said 10, what is it? 1059 to 12. 1039 to 12.58. About 219, yeah? So 1239, uh, 1039 to 12.58, I would say, yeah, 219. Clip length, sorry, that, sorry, uh, that was three, that was three, and clip length was 219. 219, yeah, 219. Three hours, 28 minutes to get the joists up and the sheeting on top. That's quite good. Um, so we take that number. I would actually say that's a good data point. So we. <laughs> so then we go. I would go to SH3. So there's data collection in our development template. I'm going to say time to install. So installation of joists. Joists plus roof sheathing installation. So first I could say okay here's. I guess here's the data right here. I would say from 10.39 to 12.58. What do we say? Three hours and 28. Twenty-eight minutes via time-lapse calculator. So we save that. So it's a good data point. Hey, um, good to know. Yeah, I mean that, that yesterday at the very end that was. Just nine. 
quite uh, satisfying just to do that in a second. I don't know, any other comments from yesterday? What do we learn? Um, definitely helps when you got the whole crew up there. So we, we got everybody up there. Penny was up there. Mm -hmm. Give your personal invitation. And uh, screen that off, screen all the wood off that a lot of people can be up there. The roof can hold us, so it's like if we had 20, 30 people, we could just do that and you know shrink that even further if you have enough drills and uh, you know but there's certain not enough. Where it gets dangerous. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think that's as long as like, uh, yeah, yeah still get a little. Ahead. As long as you stay away from the edge and make make sure yeah. you're not you know, falling off. Way. Like when, yeah. When I got on the roof when we were laying down the plywood, it seemed like it was just. Uh, semi organized chaos, you know, there were like, I'd look at a board yeah. and there'd be screws missing, and then I'd try to like line them up and drill them, but there were no lines, and so I'd, I'd like, oh, yeah, it, and I, I, a lot of times hit the joints, but sometimes miss. Yeah, yeah, that part there regarding if we could just go back to this part, let's let's talk just a second about that because we were we were rather chaotic on the step here, but there's a you got to follow up procedure. Uh, so try to I think it's, oh, yeah, describe yeah, um, here. Wood availability that day was the, the thing that kept us from having it done before five. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can. But you can do you it. Could mark. You can do it on the roof too. You can have a team just marking all of them. But of course, you can do it on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. You can mark it all the way from one from one side to the other because they're all like a, a joist. Basically, you gotta make sure that people do not get one. Hold the joists in place. Like, you can hold uh, joists. I think that was part of the problem. I, 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 I think the quickest way to do it was, would be to have uh, uh, two or four starting to place plywood with just four screws across the whole building. Yeah. And then a team behind the screws in all the little ones. Yeah. So you can fit more and more people as the plywood yeah, is right. getting bigger. Yeah. Or have a focus team doing that center strip. And it's almost what and we once did. You have that strip, then you can like have people on either side. Yeah. Pop them in. I also wonder if it would have helped to build the stairs early. Like if you have the stairs in place, just to make it easier to get materials up and down. Uh, not the big things okay. that won't fit yeah. through, or that's better to take from the side of the building. But like getting t tools and maybe safer. Yeah, safety. Mm -hmm. It would be helpful also to have a path of like this is where the plywood is, this is where the big boards are gonna. Come up so that nobody's trying to screw anything around there and then gets whacked by the side of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that I was, was my part. I didn't let her know. Well, not well. <laughs> you did. You did that. But just that in the the rush and energy to get it done, if we had organized a little bit, then we could use the same amount of energy and speed and um, not have to worry about it. You know. But yeah. Point availability. Um, knowing where we can get wood um, in a pinch. When we're trying to finish something up, it killed our time yesterday because we could add those plates in before lunch. So that was yeah. just one thing that was most exciting. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's what we kept up until seven. Really. But, uh. Was it plywood or? Uh, two by six. six. Yeah. Bane is my existence. So as far as the plywood, the procedure there, yes, we can do like first sheet along the the midline, four screws into a corner. And then mark every two feet. Make sure you get a screw in there, so that to either side you can do everything. There's two pieces that are cut into half, so you stagger the whole pattern. So there's two full rows of sheets of eight footers, and two rows where the end pieces are four by fours. But uh, that's pretty good. That that goes pretty fast, and nothing major. The other thing that if we were doing this in a real build, the, the plywood clips would be useful here to span the space in between the joists, wherever the, so wherever you have the space, uh, you can't see it, but in between two joists where the edge of the plywood lies, those two pieces of plywood should be connected through these plywood clips. Do people know how they look? plywood clips you put this on one edge and oh. connect two edges together and these work well 
Then there's this other thing we're using called... Quite expensive. Well, that would be for like a hundred of them or something. Okay. Yep. There's Grip H clips. We also have this, which have this kind of lip. So it's easier to get the plywood in there. And these are less aesthetic, if it's, say they're in your ceiling, if you're looking at them, but they're easier to install. But probably if it's plastic, it's not going to be as strong. I mean, what's the PSI of plastic? It's around the 5,000 mark. Metal is 50,000. So if you have a comparable width, comparable thickness, maybe this is like twice or something thicker than the metal ones, you're still like five times less strength on that. So over time, you might how far? not sure how every every bay so every two feet okay. just one per bay between the joists so moving right along so let's so now the last remaining parts of this build before we go to the interior finishing is the carport and the siding so let's talk about the carport today and siding tomorrow so siding is cement siding which will which has special connectors and special finishing detail Z flashing, caulk and battens and things like that. We'll, we'll go all through all of that tomorrow. But today is a good exercise in kind of summarizing all, a lot of the different techniques we learned because to build the carport requires a lot of the skills. It's kind of a synthesis of many of the skills. It's a, it's a 16 by 16 build right next to the house. Uh, how does the carport look? I think you can see best um, in the finished, the more finished house. Uh, my videos. What's the carport? It's a covered structure. It's no, I'm in the wrong, wrong account. It's not a garage because it's actually open on both sides, and the uh, consideration for that is it's really the safety of if you have a closed structure as a garage where you can have vapors such as gasoline build up. That's that's got some certain other safety provisions like a little bit more firewall prevent protection between the house and the car and the garage here it's a carport so we get away with codes for decks it's literally a covered deck um, so cover deck and, and that would be in the version we're doing, it's we covered with EPDM, so it's watertight. Okay, where's some pictures here? So that's that's how it looks in progress here. But that's that's the carport. We actually have posts, and then you see the EPDM getting covered there, um, right there. But in this case, so the posts are pretty hard to do. You have to dig into the ground. We didn't have a. It's just earth there around the house. Here we have a foundation, so. We, we don't have to do the posts. A very simple way to do this, if you have a foundation like we do right now, would be just to frame up four, four wall modules on the end. So the posts are quite a bit harder because you got to get them right in the right spot. They have to be the right height and all of that. So you have to do a lot of adjustment. It's a lot of freeform adjustment where you have to get your diagonal uh, exactly squared to start in the right position. Uh, the posts are six by sixes. They get quite heavy, so you're moving them in and out into a concrete base. Uh, so we dug holes with just a manual hole, not a manual, but a powered hole auger. <coughs> we threw some concrete down there and the posts in there. So that's that's the basics. But here it's a um, little simpler. Let's see. Uh, we're not going to have, we don't need the posts. Here. These are actually not structural posts. They're there for, so we can actually mount the doors and, and sheeting around that so we don't need those but what we do have in in today's build so that's kind of cool we can say oh wow we're gonna build a carport today that's pretty good typically it would take you much longer than a day but we can probably very likely do that all not have a problem to do that all today so what's it take um, there's a bunch of different things what happens um, and let's maybe let's open this dock up for everybody so we can have teams maybe work on different things we can find and and edit um, editor so if you get into this doc it's in the email I sent today or let me put it into the chat as well of the zoom so 
so feel free to edit this. But what are some of the elements we're doing? There's quite a bit of elements that goes into it, so a brief overview. So we've got the walls, the stem walls on the side, one side, which are laying on the concrete. They're going to be our standard nine-foot modules. Uh, if we do them, they'll have a slight slope from the, if we put them on the ground, they'll have a very slight slope of 1.5 inches from the house itself. If we put the, so there's a ledger, how do you hang th this, this carport? It's a bunch of joists that are hanging, so this is, you know, say that's the house, a bunch of joists against the house on a ledger board. That ledger board is screwed in with lag bolts or screws, uh, more screws if, if you don't have lag bolts. Lag bolt pattern is about every eight, 11 inches, you put a half inch lag bolt that goes into the framing of the house, which we're actually connecting it to where the floor structure of the first floor is so you've got meat there you've got the framing of the house there so there's joist construction standard joists that we have a lot of experience with already on the on the ceiling on both the floor floor and roof platforms uh, you start out with squaring a structure you still have to start square so you're not just putting your your wall modules up in a random position it would be a good exercise to say okay this is exactly where they have to be by the corner um, the corner that's 16 and 16 feet away you can measure the diagonal so that um, you can do that. But let's let's actually do that. Uh, let's have somebody do that today to practice that. That's a pretty good skill. Yeah. Do we need to do two more standard wall modules? Is that the idea? Four more standard wall modules, but now two by fours. We don't need. Yeah. We don't need two by six, but if we we could use two by six, you get 24 on center framing. If you use two by four, which we have, uh, we don't have. Two by sixes, by the way, left, so we yeah. can do two by four. But you need 16 inch centers, so that's just the only difference. Not every 24 inches, but every 16 inches for the for the vertical studs. Four simple ones, few minutes. Don't don't need sheeting on that. Um, so you're gonna start by squaring a structure. Uh, when we screw, when we put in a structure there, we can use screw anchors. We haven't done them for the house. Um, I mean, we don't have to right now, but we, we should practice that. So screw anchors, you gotta actually drill into the concrete. So you, you go, you drill a hole through the wood and then continue with a masonry bit into the concrete. Screw anchors, we have our, I think like six inches or something like that. So, well, we gotta do that. Screw anchors. But oh, wait. Yeah? You mean place a oh, uh, wooden piece or the actual, the actual module? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, got the bottom plate yeah. of the wood yeah. module. Yeah. So and screw anchors. Um, hold that in place. Screw it once. Screw it once more. And then, yeah. So we're gonna do a seal. Um, you could do that. We can also just ram these right into. You can do a sill plate on the bottom. You can do. That was there. You should do a sill plate to get everything aligned so that they're not, they're not yeah, curved. A sill plate. If you do the sill plate, then we're gonna be, for the top of this platform we're going to be flat yeah that's the only difference we can do it flat we, we don't care about like typically you'd want to have a four inch slope over that mm -hmm. um, we so we can cut them off it's, oh, it's since we have it's a yeah, it's a deck it's a, a deck, it's a right? carport it's a deck it's an officially it's called a deck the way it's designed that fits a car under <laughs> but i mean on top on top it's a deck yeah. it's a viable deck that we put the sheeting on Okay. At the end. I don't like slopes when I'm walking around with that. Yeah. Because no, there's a door frame right in that. Yeah. It's, it's 1.5. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, if we don't, if we use pre-cut studs that are 9 foot, we're going to have a flat flat surface. Yeah, we you can, can do that. You can cut them down. Uh, what do we do? If we have pre-cuts, uh, we could save them and just say we do it flat. If, if we have other material, then we can cut it to so it's sloped down by like one and a half. It should be the official slope that you want most is four inches over that 16, which is a 2% slope, which is plenty so you don't get water pooling there and it dries off quickly after rains. So, uh, Logan? Raising the ledger board, can you do that? Like you can do that too. We can actually do that because the ledger board right now is predefined to be a little bit under the door so that um, there's a doorway there we can move it up a little bit because we have space. We, um, we have, I think we have space there. Um, currently we have, you have the nine, you, you have one sill plate, you've got the frame, you've got the top plate, you've got the second, the second story there. 
Um, I mean, we can do it that you just raise that a, an inch or two there. Uh, the detail for the door will not work out at that point though because you want to be a little below the door uh, so that you don't get water into the door. So you want to be like, you know, like an inch and a half or something below the door, which means that if we did uh, use the pre-cut studs like we are right now, we'd actually have an upward slope by 1.5 inches. So uh, since, since this is an experimental structure, we can raise the ledger board if we want to, or just cut down the, uh, the thing to do would be to cut down the, the joists sorry the, the the frame modules uh, which one do we want to do so we we don't like turn that into a major discussion we could decide that let's just do the the wall modules proper so they have the proper and then there's a proper drop of about 1.5 inches under the door so you're not getting water into the door let's do the proper so if you have pre-cut eight footers just trim them down a little bit so that but okay, but, but we don't have a sill plate, so there's still. End up uh, well, we said we are gonna do a sill plate. Okay. Instead of sill plate, you could make a bottom board with pre-cut lumber, and then just have a line and very straight out, string your lines down on the line. Uh -huh. What wood are we using? But the sill plate is not so. For the exists, so we have. It's all two by fours. It's all two by fours. Yeah, we're doing two by fours, but where, uh, where is that wood? Uh, two by fours are in the back. Under the back, back cover, there's a whole bunch. The back, back, back wood storage. So the modules should be one and a half inch shorter than eight feet. But they're nine feet because the first floor is nine feet. So, so let's, oh yeah, let's go into the dock. So people, if you have a computer, edit this thing. So this is a nine foot wall module. But we're going to cut it down. How much? Four inches. So if you have pre-cuts, which are 90, one of, one what is it? One of four and five eighths. Is it five or three? Five. So let's, let, let's get specific on this, because this is the kind of stuff that we'll be like questioning back and forth later on. So we got to write this down. So one of, so you Google length of nine foot pre-cut. 104 and 5 eighths. 104 5 eighths uh, for the pre cuts with the top and bottom plate, it ends up being about 9 feet. So here we're going to take not 104 and 5 eighths, we're going to go 100 and 5 eighths. I mean, that 5 eighths doesn't matter so much. We could just go keep it simple at 100. So we've got a 5 eighths extra of slope, that's acceptable. Just do 100 for simplicity. 100 inch studs, that's easy to remember. Let's do that. And how many do we need for the total? So what's, um, four modules. we need four, four modules. modules with 16, so there's Times four three, per, right? So 12. Yeah. So what are we building? I did three studs per module. No, you said every 16, every 16 inches yeah, means yeah, you yeah. got four. So what's what's each wall module look like? It looks like this. Uh, there's four. And then you get top and bottom plate, so you need another eight foot. So take, take one of those. You got your top and bottom plate, four feet. So you got this. Um, wall frames. Yeah, at least, at least we got we got a whole bunch. Yeah. Would you have four foot spans? Yeah. So shouldn't there be three? Four. Sixteen Four wall modules. Yeah. Right. So what do we do? What we're gonna say here. We're gonna say times four. We need four of these. 100 foot studs, uh, four foot top and bottom. And we need to build four of these. Yeah. Okay. 
Who killed it? I right the door. Door for what? Uh, Which one? Door. Carport door. Oh, the where the car drives in. Uh, we can do it. We we can do it. But we're not. We're we're talking mostly about getting the structure up as a deck, and then those things are. We can fit those things in. They're not structural pieces, so we can fit that in later. I, I'm not sure how important that is or whether we're going to get to it today. Um, but that those are all non-structural, so we can fit that after we've got all the joists you attach to that. From and that you point. change the definition of the deck, right? If you made an enclosure like a door, it's still a deck. Yeah. If the inspector looks at it. Okay. So, and this is a uh, 48 inch. 48 inch, two by four. So this is wall modules, remember, this is all two by fours. Two by four lumber. So that's what we do, times four of these. Uh, we're gonna have a sill plate, let's, let's say. Uh, the things are two by four as well? Yeah, everything is two by four. For everything. So the sill plate will go down with concrete screws, but the other ones will go down with just basic. Our basic longies? The wall modules? Yeah, like the house. Yeah, so this is uh, mirroring the interior wall modules of the house. The interior wall modules are 2 by 4s So, uh, so then we're going to have a sill plate. So the sill plate is going to be how long? 16. 4 feet. Oh, we have those 16 footers that we used for foundation leveling. Just use that. Oh, yeah. Also, we have... Shit, we have... Um, if you guys wanted to break down the scaffolding, I think mm. you got most of it right there. Can we use the scaffolding or something for the interior? Yeah. You can do that, but I then, the but then that's uh, that's not pre-cut. Those are good modules for the interior. Those are good for the interior yeah, of the they're, house. They're so taller. maybe see, save them. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be too long to just cut these and all that. So, um, so 16 foot treated. You'd want to use treated there. We have those lying around. Just do the ones that we did for the foundation. So. Yeah. So you guys just pop them off and then just put them in. So that's that's the 16 footer for the sill plate. There's gonna, yeah, there's gonna be a 16 foot sill plate that goes under all modules. Uh, we've got uh, Menards um, concrete concrete bed. It's on the far side. Yeah, there's nothing in the middle. There's, it's all all on the far side. I don't think we're doing the car part. We got masonry bits, we got... We're, we're drilling black pair of bolts into the, the foundation. Yeah, let's get practice on that. We haven't practiced that. So we've got a half inch... Do we have a masonry drill? Or are we just... Excuse me. We got these. So we got a couple of these, so... Here's the house. The, this is the deck. This is where the wall modules are, in a line. All right, that still plate's going to go under here. Lining like that. This is going to be all open so a car can drive or anything can get through it. There ain't going to be nothing right there. It's all on this far end. And they go. Impact drill. So, uh, impact. What's an impact drill? Do we have impact drills? Those are corded drills. Yeah. That, even the, some of the cordless drills have impact setting where it kind of rams a little bit so it's easier to drill through concrete. After that, um, I mean, we have, we actually have air impact tools if you want to get that out, but I mean, you could do various various things here from air impact, which we have, to just corded impact drill. Do you have a hammer drill because those are SVM Hammer. Plus. They're not standard bits. I got a hammer setting. Hammer drill. I think we have a couple of these um, in the shelves. So, yeah, so do those. Um, we got two bits so two people can go at it. But first you got to pre-drill a hole that's a little larger, like maybe like five eighths through the wood so that the flutes of the anchor don't go through it. So let's see, red devil anchors, I think we, that's what we, 
Did you have to do anything pre in the concrete at all? No. Okay, so it's just, just in the just right in. wood and then let, let it grab. Right. Well, what, uh, what kind of space uh, do we want on this? Do, uh, I mean, this is just for fun, but you could do four you or eight, like shit, every two <laughs> feet. <laughs> Or every four feet. I mean, we're just getting practice on doing this. So if we get, if it's easy, we might do more. It might be, it might be a little hard. There's code on this window, right? There's what? There, there would be like an actual like code on this. Window. Oh yeah, uh, the code. Um, so these are it. You would go to um, redhead. Okay, things like this. We've got something like this. The code would. Okay, let's look at Simpson Simpson screw anchor. That will give you the numbers. These ones. So you look at the table here, which is below, and it uh, let's see installation design information. So you read it off the code. Read it off. What's it say? Uh, pretty quickly. Can we see that? So if you've got We've got half by six, about there. Um, Minimum spacing in inches. Nominal anchor diameter symbol units. It's not. Let's see. Concrete. Uh, I don't know which table it is here. Um, but it would be like each one of those we had a rough calculation that they're 8,000 pounds of strength. Oh, each? Oh, okay. Each. Based on a flute overall surface area of all the flutes going into 4,000 psi concrete. We calculated it was about two, two square inches of surface area on the threads over the entire length times 4,000 psi. So you get rough rough calculation of 8,000 which I think it kind of actually met what the actual number was. Um, we can look at that later. It's it's not going to be more than like two feet, um, less than two feet. It's I think it's like every two feet or so. Well, we can um, uh, place them that's on, under the studs since we're screwing in between. Them. Right. So you would put them where? Well, no. Uh, where do they go? So the space equally as the studs, perhaps. No, I we'll hit them. Copy I'm image. <coughs> where do these go? For starters, I would do one there. Uh, see if you need more. But I mean, four for these, I mean, this is just for us to practice it. Um, probably, like, if this were for real, it might be this. Yeah. And then I would, my guess would be, and then one here, and then one in this one. And then two in the last one, yeah. something like that. It was my guess. We but yeah, yep. So right procedure for the sill plate. Yes. Okay. Well, let's go back. So we kind of talked about the structure of the actual frame. So let's talk about the squaring the structure because this is part of it. So let's square the structure. Slide, duplicate, slide, squaring, squaring the carport. Katrina left a notice here about uh, house wrap before carport. House wrap before carport, eh? <laughs> we can do both at the same time. Uh, uh, some people search for wood. Before the carport. Okay, we got to do that. Uh, let's get at least the first layer up. Okay. Or the sidewall. Um, what's the logic behind that? Insulation or you don't want to. It, it's going to be in your way once you once you uh, yeah get it up. Yeah, once you put the I guess the ledger when you put that on, you still want protection under the ledger. So yeah, you Katrina, any comments? If you want to pipe in to explain to us why the house wrap goes in if the siding goes after. We said the siding goes after because we can work around. But to me, it would be like the siding would, would want to be in the first too. However, if you put the siding and then you don't have a, as good a connection to the ledger because it's got a little bit of extra length to go through, maybe that's that's the reason. I want to oscillate out where your wood is, right? You know what I mean? Cut it out and then so it's plus. 
uh, where the where the, the wood meet, meeting the house is. Yeah. So how do you square a foundation? Trigonometry. How to? <laughs> right here, it's do this. We we talked about this, but the person, and I think it embodied it right. I talked about this already, but you can review this. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to repeat myself from what I said last time, but but do this, follow this in detail so that you can do that in about five minutes. So you take measure six. Well, let's 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 document that here. Uh, so we've got the house. So that's the house. Here's now our carport, which is so this house is going to be more like like this. The carport is going to be like this here. So what do you do first? I would say measure the 16 here. Take one one of the sides. Start from the, the house. And you actually want to start, where at the house do you start? Do we start at the framing or at the, at the siding, at the uh, sheathing? We, we typically start with the framing since that's, the framing is actually 16 by 32. It's not the sheathing, which adds, there's like half plus the siding. So you're actually ending up with one more inch for the actual overall mm -hmm. outside the framing. Let's measure from framing. Got a nice arc happening there already, which I like because that's going to be I there think for the future. Is raising your hand to say something? This, yeah. This, I don't have right access to this document. Anyone on the internet can find an edit. Do you have the right link? Um, I just pasted it in the chat again. Click on it. So this is collaborative doc editing. So um, <clears throat> we want to get a 16 measurement from the, let's call it from the framing, um, which means that if we do exactly 16 and we have a ledger that our carport joist will end up an inch or so away from the house which that's cool that's well we, in which case we do we care no. not really um, so make this 16 by 16 so we start out well on the foundation but that means when the joists go up they're sticking over an inch and a half or in fact an inch and a half plus the sheathing so actually two inches fine So let's keep the bottom to the 16 at the framing level. So next to the frame of the house, we're going to keep it to 16. So. And by that, you mean the corner edge of the sill plate on the, we're going off of that, right? Well, where's the, let's draw those arrows. Let's get all the details in here. Because the, because once we get out there, we'll be like, what to do next? Let's write it down here. So. Here's exactly 16. And we're, we are repeating ourselves. We actually went through this. We have this doc uh, actually in, um, let's see, we had 120 design lessons. We have, This, this is what we started the apprenticeship, but somewhere in here when we did the carport, maybe day 18, um, roof layers, no, carport was maybe later, maybe like, let's see what we had in this doc. We went through this specific procedure for how you actually get um, we, I can teach it on, on, on site for anybody else. Yeah, right, because we can look at the docs and also on site is rein, reinforcing what we're learning there. Let's see. So you had uh, anyway. like um, in so math? It's, it's a few steps, but you got to follow those step by step. So measure the 16. 
so one measure 16 feet but where from let's just maybe use since we we don't know where the sheeting ends just go measure from the sheeting since this is an exercise just go from the sheeting to because you have to this has many little details that at the end of the day people get confused but to make things simple maybe just measure right off the, the siding so that we don't have to subtract that half inch for the siding makes it a little easier it's on the side so we've got the house the house has got the sheeting it's easy to take your tape to it right uh, as opposed to then you need to remember one more piece of information I'm going to subtract half an inch because that's the sheeting but there's the sheeting offset from the house and there's also on the other side so do you go from the corner or do you go from sheeting you know what I'm saying? Like there's, like there's a border around there. There's a sill. The sill is um, still exposed at the bottom too. So yeah, you can uh, measure off of that. Measure off of that. Just okay. Measure 16 feet off the sill. Okay. Corner edge. There we go. Measure 16 feet off the sill. Step two. Mark an arc. Mark an arc. There, like, um, so I'm gonna borrow this arc here. Okay. Oh, uh -huh. am I gonna be able to do that? No, I don't know how to work that arc. Um, but let's let me approximate that arc with this curve there well that curve is going to be mark that arc which is going to be a it's going to look like a straight line mark an arc at 16 feet so what am i talking about there it's that right there this thing right there mark that thing there um because we don't know, once again, we don't know where that is, where the thing is. So do the same on the other side. So the other side actually has been shown. So the arc is there already. In fact, maybe we should point to that since that's all ready for us. So mark that arc there. Um, but mark both of them because you need them both at the end of the day. So you're measuring 16 feet off. Now you're going to have to measure um, this line here, this, this side here. So let's take this arrow here. So let's get really clear on this procedure. You need to know this, this. And right now we know the foundation is exactly 16, so we're good at the bottom. We're not going to propagate errors from that. So we know we know that this is like green for good here. That's 16 feet. So we're going to measure. Let's see, so this 16 here, now put, put it in orange since we're getting ready to, that, that we need. Well, this one here is what I care about. So you're going to need to measure this, this, uh, this side here. Uh, 
on what do you call it right side in this picture well no 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 you don't even that that you actually this one is actually going to be redundant we know the 16 on this one edge here we're going to measure 16 here and that triangle is going to be that intersection okay we kind of move that can somebody move that move that point but where those two arcs intersect is exactly where that corner is going to be and do that for that one corner and for the second corner mm -hmm. so can can you remember that Nothing's. yeah uh, wouldn't it be just easier just to create right angles and then like square it up with a, uh, a brace you're gonna how are you going to get a right angle? We are getting a right angle here. Well, we, yeah, well, so I would argue this is the abstract version of doing it versus like just building a right angle and going from there one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. is like you're not going to get that kind of accuracy yeah, by building it. Basically won't. You're, you're In practice, it's much harder. Okay. Trust nothing except math. Here, <laughs> when done properly, this should easily yield within a quarter inch of accuracy. But no questions we, we asked. Watch this method fail for like five no, hours. No, 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 no. This is the method no. that we finally got to. I, at the end I had, had to go out finish. there because it was failing, and I showed the people how to do that in about ten minutes, and we were done. And the foundation right now is plus minus like an eighth. Okay. So it so doesn't lie. That's why the, I mean, this again. procedure does That's not lie. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're not. You're still a disbeliever. You still. <laughs> 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 you still don't believe it, but you got to do this. Otherwise, you're going to be fumbling back and forth and it's going to take a take a bunch of time. Yeah. Okay. So we got how far <laughs> you got to do it. Wood yeah. excavation and then module cutting and then should be ready. For ledger. That. Ledger needs to get marked. Yeah. A what? 16 foot ledger. 16 foot ledger. So do people know what the ledger? So let's talk about the ledger. Yeah. How big is the board? Okay. Next slide. So we're gonna get this is good on uh, yeah continue on page three maybe put in some more detail there but here we're gonna go to the ledger so now the house so this is a uh, side of house let's call it actual real direction it's actually facing east. Mm -hmm. So there we go, it's pretty tall, like this about. So ledger would be this thing, the board, which is a two by 12. Treated or not treated, next to the house. Katarina, treated or not treated. Treated, I mean, it's, yeah, because we have the EPDM on top, this, well, this one does kind of hang out to the edge, so yeah, you probably want to treat it, but we said kind of like, definitely make the ones that are on the very outside treated, the ones that are actually inset, they're probably okay if they're not, because they're not getting any wetness, like as in rain. So, treated, Katarina says. So do treated. And that's that's our ledger here. Well, markings. So two two foot on center joists. So we do exactly what we did for the joists on the roof and floor. Every two feet. And this we're gonna put. Okay. So what's important measure? Sorry, I thought our ledger was coming in inset an inch, so it would be a 14 foot ledger. Okay, but, uh, but yeah, but. Um, if that's not the case, that's fine. No, let's we'll do 16. 16. Make, make, you know. 16. Okay. I would say, uh, because um, we have, the only reason why we said is, um, so let's look at what joist hangers are. And there's a thing called an inset joist hanger for the edge. We, we, we don't have those. We got a bunch of these uh, regular ones. 
inset well let's go to actually to sh that, to that ledger is the same as the roof door, it's 2x12 and it's stuck same thing. to the side of the building yeah. yeah, so if you go to the bill of materials on seed home 2 we have those joists here that would be oh word it's got so many tabs probably second Menard's order <coughs> joist hanger oh now it'll be under carport actually here so Menards and said Joyce. Okay. Take a look at that. Flange joist hanger. It's not coming out. Uh, it's got a line break in there. Try link again, Katarina. These are inset joist hangers, meaning the flanges are inside. Uh, we don't have those. We have the regular ones. That's why we said let's move the the last joist an inch inside so we can hang hang the regular joist hanger. Um, we might have a couple. I'm not sure. But these are regular ones. The flanges are to the outside. Uh, and for this, if you want people, like a bunch of people, 10 or 20 people to stand up there, you got to have those. That's what holds the actual joist in place to the ledger. And here we're going to screw them in with long screws. Typically use 10 uh, like 3-inch nails to do that. Here we're using screws. Um, so joist hangers, copy image. So the deck joists, go they go 90 like degrees this. from the roof joist? Yeah, yeah, 90 degrees, and s very slight. So, uh, so this image, so copy do you, image. Do you want that first one flush with the building, or do you, do you care if it's inside or outside? Uh, do it, put it an inch within, so we actually can actually use the regular one. So if we mark this, right. it's not a, not so a big deal there. So two inch on two two foot on center, except the first one is inset an inch. Okay. Yeah. So, ledger. Let's write that down. Two foot on center, except edges are inset one inch. Lag bolts is how we attach these. Lag bolts, we do that into the house. Or screws. We we've got also s that that's the official way to do it. Uh, official schedule is every 11 inches staggered, like in this manner here. So like that. It's actually staggered like that, just kind of up towards up and towards down. Three inches away from the edge, more like two inches or three inches away from the edge. Kind of this pattern. Don't need to. Pre-drill? Yes, they do. Quarter-inch pre-drill. So that's that's the pattern. I don't understand a two-foot on center except edges are inset. What what does that mean? Two foot. On one center. inch on set. So whenever you put that that front one in, yeah, it'll sit nicely with with the rest. So um, what that means jutting out because. The 16, if you put it at the end, it, it'll be a little bit further out. Uh -huh. um, everything else is just a two foot, like we did Joyce. Okay, so I'm drawing a picture of that in a, this little picture here. When I hear it, I think that also, the two last ones at the edges have an inch between, and the rest is two foot. An inch in, so they sit. 
nice and, and flat. Uh, so, and so let's draw that yeah. pattern out. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll visualize what it's in front of me. Well, here it is. So you got two foot markings. Well, so this one, the distance from that one is one inch there. So that's a one inch thing inset where you start the actual flange of the joist. So that's an inch distance. Okay. See what I'm saying there? Yeah. And then every other distance All right, now is I get two it. feet, but two feet from where? Two feet from the edge. When it's two feet on center, it means the center of the center of that joist here is two feet from the edge. That what's that's what two two foot on center means. So that distance there. That's twenty four inches. Center of joist to center of joist. Yes. And that's we've done that for all the other stuff, all the roof and the floor. So that's that's what we do there. 24 inch on center except this one inch inset. Uh, we're complicating it, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a good exercise in understanding what's going on here. One inch inset. Because we have that flange that sticks out, so we just wanted to yeah. accommodate it. Is that gonna um, end up being an even number or like evenly spaced? Given the full length, of this, it's 16 feet, and then you go around the inch, and then everything the short. You, you don't measure from the inch. You still you measure, from from the inch. Edge. measure from the edge. Measure from the edge. Yeah, I just think it is. It'll be. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be perfect. Okay. Yeah. So that's a break. Trim to 16 yeah. feet. Yeah, yeah I'm going to trim it down. Right, so that means that's a break in that, so that's a long ledger. It's uh, continuing here and every two feet. So that's what the ledger looks like. Pre drill holes are quarter inch for half inch lag bolts. Pre drill. Um, all right, so we say. So for the lag bolt, half inch lag bolt. Pre drill a quarter inch. So the lag bolts, those are the lag bolts. Uh, but a side question when we screw in the wall modules, uh, like we're already done. There's a point to making those staggered as well, right? Rather than in the street. You only got that much meat. Uh -huh. Thickness of the board. Yeah. Well, it's better than just putting in a straight line, right? Or just stagger them. Too close to the edge. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's well, tiny. Well, they hold uh, against each other also. Not so. much. Ledger. How long is the ledger? Sixteen feet. What's it made of? Two by twelve. Treated or untreated? Treated. Treated, yeah. 2 by 12 treated. Um, it's also going to come in probably like a little bit oversized, so we probably trim it down. Right? It's probably going to come 16 and 3 quarter. Yeah, we need to trim it down. Measure everything. Okay, that, what's the distance under the door? That's the door, that's the side door there. Adjust. Adjust for what? The There's house and the roof no adjustments. On it. Okay, okay. It doesn't matter if it's slightly off here. Yeah, so we have a door. How far down is the ledger from the door? It's got to be uh, at least 12 inches or whatever the width of uh, joists are plus what, 2 inches, whatever you want your drop to be. Uh-uh. 
Is these are joist hung. Oh, sorry. Yeah, these are joist hung right here. So, so, so the joist hangers what? are actually three inches right uh, there. One and a half inches uh, for rain. The space between yeah, the door and the, and, the, and, the, and the deck. Yeah, so you don't get water in there if you were in. Yeah, but that's the between deck. not the ledger and the door, right? That's the further back module that's on the slope. I was thinking no, I'm asking about the door and where you hang the, hang your joists yeah. or hang. No, first we gotta hang the ledger. So the question is, where do we hang the ledger in relationship to the door? Mm. How high above above the door? What's the push? Is the below? thickness of the plywood? If you want to flush. The door is exactly 16. 80 should be 80. The door usually is 80, 80 inches. No, but okay. okay so width, all I'm asking is. Um, what I'm asking is the distance between the ledger and and the what is that the little ledger, distance the there? Okay. That little distance, um, which you it's the is the thickness of the plywood? Yes. Yeah, so or plus the you silk plate and the wall module, which is three inches. The plywood, then the okay. The so about a what is the and distance? A half above? Is that about right? Too much. Man, you want to jump a foot and a half down to the deck? Do we want oh, it flush? Wait, which door are you talking about? Are this talking door. About the uh, wait, you're not what mirroring me. Oh, sorry. Tight. Tight. Yeah. Tight. 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 Oh, this is yours, video, no? I I'm sharing it. I'm sh I've got, I've got this in mine. Oh, so you're not okay. Then I get uh, no, probably the first tab. Oh, I'm sharing my screen here. No, what the? Because you are viewing my screen. Yeah, this is your screen, Marcia. Yeah. So it's sharing webcam and your desktop. Then there are two doors. The bottom door and the upper. I mean, your relationship. Is there like a view options? But so. Oh, maybe yeah. Oh yeah, I got bumped out of Zoom. Yeah. Okay, so it's basically It's colder. Ah, it's a German coming on the 19th. Oh, okay. I mailed about it yesterday. He emailed it. Email, yeah. How about now? I'm just, yeah, this door. This door. What's the distance? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, a normal, a normal one. I do at four inches at a maximum um, for for uh, downward step is most comfortable for people. I don't know if that's relation to what say or the slope that we want. Oh. Yeah, do we want to step down? Yeah. What's the determination here? You want to step down? How much? I think it's going to be an inch and a half. Yeah, just enough because to not get water in. Well, because yeah, you need that ledger above. The ledger basically goes in the same, same, place. same place as the ring right? Yeah, you don't want to make it too low. You want to hit the the first floor platform on the house. You want to hit into the edge, the rim joist or edge joist. Okay. Okay. So behind this is another structure, a 2 by 12 yeah. for the floor. So you want to be around close to it. So, But you want enough downfall so you don't get water in the door. So inch and a half, just minimum. Right. After the sheathing on a, you're gonna be an inch above it. Wow, right. So that's it's fine. Plywood on top, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, so one, four, five, eight, plus three on the bottom. Three on oh yeah, the top. it shouldn't be able to group so water on the edge of the door. Right, yeah. yeah. One, but it's also slope to it. One ten and five eight inches from. The yeah, the, there's a slope. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is not reflected in the ledger. That's when you go away from the ledger. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's the ledger. Now, what's the mounting like on, on the, let's take a look at just maybe the last, last thing. How do we mount it on the actual wall modules? So, go on top. connection of platform to uh, walls. I mean the wall. What do you call it? Stem wall or to wall support? 
now what do we call it the front what do we call the four what do we call this wall modules what's happening there Uh, the rim joists are going to be one component that will be holding some basic. Um, well, with the math we have, it won't be a rim It's going to be a rim joist. So we need to have either the joist cut short by an inch and a half, or we need to extend our our length out by an inch and a half. Always we don't have that. Cons well, yeah, we do because we have plywood constraints. Yeah, we got to actually cut our joists down just like we did before, right? Because we're going to have plywood on top, so we got to do the same thing. Yeah, so 15 feet 9 inches. Mm hmm. And that goes for the measuring too, then? No? No. For, no. The, for the square? Yeah. No, That's still 16. Okay, yeah. and then with the. Alright, yeah. right, yeah. I'm not yeah. changing anything. That's <laughs> yes, uh, two forward widths. Yeah, so we've got, so joists are 15 foot 9 inch, how many of them? We've got, just got to count on that. We got, we're spanning 16 feet. How many does that make? How many, how many joists do we have? How many are we hanging? Nine. Nine. So nine joists are 15 foot, nine inch. Yeah. And no double plating at all. So, I mean, from the top view, Yeah, so, so what happens at the end, there's a, so first we had, so that's eight of them here, we need one more. How can I make this a little more accurate here? Well, we've got a little inset here. So the edge ones are a little inset, just exaggerating that here. Uh, so maybe like, but anyway, so ledger that's the top this is top view ledger that that is one inch there but just emphasizing that but that's kind of how it's going to be that's ledger and that's the rim or at what do you call that rim joist let's see what a rim joist is rim no, 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 no. Oh, here they got some, so so it's a ledger. Yeah, joist, rim joist, end joist, end. Yeah. So rim joist is the one that's inset for us. So that's the rim. Um, the end joist, ledger. So what happens? What's the procedure here? How are yeah. we gonna do this? How do your joists are you've be got open in the carport? There's nothing else on them. They'll, they'll just be free, kind of out, out there. Joists are gonna be. Then you got plywood on top. No, no, I meant um, from the inside when you're looking. Up. Nothing else. This is supported by the four wall sections. For the 16 foot span, standard for two foot on center. But the, the question is how to join the end joist to the modular walls. Yeah. Yeah, and and the end. And how do we do it in practice? Because the the top of the end joist and the top of the roof joist need to end flushly with the top of the of the module wall, so we get the slope. It should not be resting on top. Okay, so let's let's draw up a game plan procedure for what's the order of how this structure is put on is installed. So step one. 
we have a are we gonna have a wall be below this already when we're gonna install the joists yeah yeah yes yeah. what are we gonna do to that wall Wrap it. to make it stand the modular one you gotta brace it brace it yeah okay so let's draw the mod modular wall let's draw it as a thing that's it's gonna be like right well it's gonna be like we said it's gonna hang off by the joists are gonna be 1.5 inches because of, we have the ledger it stands away from the wall wait we just cut it down to 59 right yeah, yeah. so it's gonna be directly below the edge yeah, that's the only thing I'm worried about is uh, if, it, if those uh -huh. if those joists are 12 inches, then that's uh, pretty far down from eight foot. That takes us at like a kind of short carport for inside. We're at 10 feet at the door. About we got nine foot modules plus the floor, which is about 12 inches. We're about 10 feet. It's gonna be tall. So we're gonna drop down to like nine and some. So this stuff here, for emphasis, I'm going to make it wider, but it ends, so there's the, let's call that modular wall, brace it. So step one is, now we're into the dirt now, that's the edge of the foundation, right? That's where we're going to end, because we started the, the Pad is 48, house is 32, carport gets us right to the edge of the foundation so we can put stakes into the ground. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Okay. So we're going to draw these, uh, this is not too perspective, but oh, yeah. stake yeah, plus uh, do do wood stakes into the ground and screw them in. Is that the bracing? Yeah. Yeah, the bracing. Screw that in. Those joists are heavy. You want to make sure this wall is standing up, doesn't fall on you. So. How many braces? Three or four. Yeah. Two and a half. Mm. Oh, three, four, two, five. Should we do the bottom half or the top half? Um, I'm bottom. Okay. You know, I mean, three could suffice because there's four modules. Three modules probably is okay. In the middle of it too. One and then, yeah, something like that. If we feel it's, we add four if we feel it's unstable, but it, that should be pretty stable there. Um, oh, what do we forget about the, the wall modules? Put a top plate on them to bond them together. So none of them are... Yeah. So step one, so let's that say... Even, hmm? That makes it even taller. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be the same as... We said we're cutting it down, so as is, because we cut it down four inches, it's still going to be four inches below. Um, Minus that one and a half inches, so it's actually be like almost four, three and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Yeah, two and a half. Uh, to make this proper, to shorten module, we should go from a hundred to ninety-eight point five. What's your To do it actually with a proper okay. slope. Ninety-eight point five. Yeah. All right. So. Step one is add top plate, two wall modules. Well, stand. I, well, I guess the procedure goes stand, okay, wall modules, brace wall modules, add top plate. And here's where you could also try to say we get a bunch of people putting a section of four walls up at one time. You can't do that. That gets into standard construction techniques here. We 
typically we like to do one module at a time and then then do it. Uh, which one do we want to do here? A little individual one by one, or tilt them all up, which means that you're putting the top plate on on the ground. Oh, that sounds dope. We have enough people. Yeah, raise it like that. That'll work. Yeah. So add top plate goes to position one. Tilt up tilt up wall modules as one unit. Confirm plumbness. I don't know what this number one. Uh, Brace wall modules. Model. Yeah, you're gonna uh, straight <laughs> plumb them. The top plate is gonna be the top connection for all four modules. Make sure that they're going to be square. Um, what, what yeah, sure. I, I know, um, it's a bit like perfectionist. You don't have squareness yet. Once we so tilt them up, right? we'll get them to square. Oh. Okay. We can't guarantee Love that yet. That's more about screwing it into the After you screw it into the foundation, you can probably rack it so like back and forth a little bit. It's a little more like thing, it's a binary. It's a little detail on the wall modules. The middle two are fine with the OSA, so this thing uh, needs to be trimmed to the outside. Uh, oh, English is like that. We just have the frame, no OSB. Like uh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, I don't need the OSB at this point. Uh, we're not finishing, we're not, I mean, we would, okay. in a real build, probably we would close that side off and stuff. Okay. But yeah. for now, we're just doing the carport. Yeah. We're going to leave the opportunity for a drive through open. Oh, yes. <laughs> With a tractor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll take the picture with it in there. Okay. Can I drive? Um, <laughs> before, so uh, add top plate while on the ground. Well, so say lay, lay, four, lay four walls next to each other. To add the top plate. In line. Oh, yeah. oh so you have top plate while it's while on the ground. On the, on the yeah. Tilt up wall modules that gets us practice in standard construction. Brace wall modules, plumb them. They might might have to rack them from side to side. Now ground zero here is we have so I'm gonna emphasize this one little point here which which is gonna save us from like lots of fumbling around and that is what do we got there we've got that mark that magical mark that we actually calculate it's gonna be exactly there and the other one on the other side it will be there you just put it right next to it it's gonna be right so you don't have to like put it up shift it back and forth you got the marks yeah so with the we edge. Yeah, to the edge. We should. We're exactly at the edge of the foundation. The edge of the carport is going to be at the edge of the cement. Yeah. Right. So, so where do we put those things if they lie down? In the dirt. In the, in the dirt. dirt. Stake it. So which is better? Stake it. Yeah, but there goes your plan of keeping them level by setting them. Oh, well, there's nothing there right now. I mean, that's working space. Until we keep oh, things up, it's working space. You're saying it's dirt. Yeah, there is not flat. Thanks. But it's mushable. All right. We, we can go to ahead. a degree. So that's okay. So say we've got that wall. We plumb the wall. What next? Which okay? So we've got rim joists. Which ones are we gonna do? What are we gonna do there? Put a team on the ledger. Put a team on the edge joist. But how do you think that edge joist? Stand up. Stand up. You could do a temporary board across its back, so you just have it stand up there. Like a, a tab? And then, like, like tabs, tab. yeah. And then toenail them or screw toenail, them? Toenail it or a few under, places. Do a, has to have some kind of a support. Before in the house, we had the OSB serve as that support. You, you just have flat plate. We actually have plenty of OSB strips, which we could add uh -huh. back there. Structural flat plates. Those structural flat plates that you could drill in every intersection, the metal stripping, metal stripping, mm -hmm. or whatever. But could we just write the structure? Because you need some structure more than just on the base, right? 
over there you would have um, you still have the joist hangers on that side as well so after the joist hangers if you have that wall section there then you would want to have hurricane ties there so we can use a few hurricane ties so let's put in a few hurricane ties so so after that we said the ledger is probably done like that could be a parallel piece but here so let's say the ledger put it fill it green because it's already done add end joist <coughs> now we're going to tilt it up we could do it on the ground as well but see that's going to Anytime that we're here before getting this up, it's a bottleneck for because as soon as the end joist is up, we can start. Well, as soon as the wall modules are up, we can probably because they lay on top of the wall. If the wall is in the correct place, you can start installing the the joists. Now, I'm I'm just thinking about how do you parallel stuff so we're not completely bottlenecked by the fact that we got to get that end joist. Uh, the wall is stand well. Yeah. The gonna I would say. You might be working on the ledge still when you're okay. working on the module. Like they can work on the house wrap while we. Ledger is um, the part that takes time is what marking. Fill in the holes. Fill in the white holes. Yeah. I know exactly where we could put board is, but we can uh, mark and place the end joist uh, while the wall modules are laying down, right? Yeah. We, we can add that step. Oh. Oh yes. Top plate. Right. Uh, before no, oh before adding the end joist, mark the end joist for locations. Yeah. I'm I'm adding it here. I'm putting it on step number two. Yeah. Sure. Holy cow. Separate those steps, mark joist positions, step number two, and then step number three, add top plate and then joist. Uh-huh. And that's the same that's for the wall, like uh, two inches on the center, one inch from the side. I mean, once you start, you have two teams then on the joists installing them. You can have three teams if they're available. So as soon as the wall is up, at that time we can start laying all the joists. They're pre-marked. And then it's adding the joist hangers. Now the joist hangers could actually also be like if you want to get fancy on the ledger, you can add those on the ground as well. Yeah. If you want to do that, but just do one side. Don't don't screw down two sides. One sides only. So we can because then you can insert the joist easily. Otherwise, it might be tight. So we'll keep that. We can say where do we put that? I don't know. We we're gonna. Uh, well, step three, mark top lid. That's and too many steps on the ledger. Like, you can do it, but I mean, it's going to take us all the time. Right? We'll we'll see how it goes if yeah, we have time. Yeah, those steps can be split up in other yeah. other sides that we need too with the module. First thing that we want to do is really mark the ledger. The ledger is going to take us all the time, so just mark, mark, and assemble the le ledger. Okay. It's just a bunch of marks. That should be quick. I mean, mark, pre-drill holes. So the only way to get into S2 changes is to, if you have wiki access. No, this is nothing to do with the wiki. This is Google Docs. While you can access it through the wiki, it's embedded in the wiki right here. But 
editing actually happens within Google Docs. So even if you don't have an account on Wiki, you can edit it. To review, three main things that happen here. Gentlemen. Um, control Z. Three main things that are happening here is square that structure. Well, let's start frame with the wall the, modules. Let's start with the wrapping. Oh, so we, we missed that even. So wrap. So. Who's gonna be on? Who's gonna be on the wrap team? I can spit some bars. Okay. That was fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know, but you're gonna do it now. <laughs> Check it. Well, uh, Natalie, do you want to be on on the the um, wrapping? I could. I don't know what that is, but it sounds great. It sounds great. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Christian and I are gonna be doing wood. I think he's gonna be doing cutting and measuring and marking. Yeah. Especially for the ledger because they're they're pretty deep in it. Um, How tall is this wrapping? Ten feet. All right. Is it getting made like um, yeah, staples? Staples. Yeah. Staples. Do we need flashing on top of the staples? No. Do we need flashing no, where we connect the ledger to to the? That's on the final, final sheathing tomorrow. Yeah. You, yeah. You're gonna need a good knife. Um, no well, knife because you're, you're, no knife because it's ten feet tall. Okay. So we need we need ladders perhaps like a for yeah the well floor. yeah right, so or just no cutting out windows or anything like that just oh well yes cut yeah yeah you got to cut cut those out right right wrap it maybe then cut it right yeah the right yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay but well, the main things are so wrapping the house installing ledger mm -hmm. so ledger team uh, the actual joists that go in there. Framing of wall modules, squaring the structure. That those are kind of the main things um, we talked about. But there's pl plenty there. Roll allocation. Joyce cutting was Logan. Logan and Paul. Okay. Uh, we're, we're also going to need a, no, we're also gonna need a separate cutter for two buys. If somebody wants to volunteer for that, huh? we're going to go. We're going to need a separate cutter for two buys while they're doing the letters. So we just get all the wood pre cut. Well, that's the framing of wall modules. Does that go in that team or? It, it's probably good. I think we have one cutting team is much better than, than splitting up the the pieces that needs to be cut. Just have one pair at the at, at the miter saw. I, it's a complete they're, bottleneck they're, though. They're, they're, they've got to um, measure it, mark it, pre-drill it. They've got a, more than just uh, that, uh -huh. that, that component. So I would there could be several split. people though, but they would keep track of it. Uh, yeah. Do a couple of cutting teams. we got multiple okay. saws. So, so joists, I would say the framing of all modules, like cut them so you, you kind of know exactly what you need. So who's that? Anthony? Was that Anthony on the wall modules or? Sure, I could be into. We're uh, I'm, me and uh, Trisha will be doing the wood pirating first, but we, we can uh, bring in the framing if uh, we can get another cutting team on two buys. Um, so they're just prepped af after we get back with all of it. Right, making the ledger. Uh, who's wor going to work the ledger? Uh, that's that's also Logan and Paul. Once we're done with assignments, I want to just check the, uh, the height of the ledger. The height of the ledger? Uh, yeah, under the door. Sir, yeah, we're, yeah, 
hey, you've got an inch and a half under the door, but we want to measure it up because that's a measurement we can take from both sides of the house so that it's all mm -hmm. straight line. And so I'll back that up. I want to check some things. Mm -hmm. Wants to square the stru structure? Square team? Hello. Maddie, don't you want to do that for me? Uh, <laughs> and the uh, sure, I'll, the I'll, I'll the square the structure need. before no, anything. And that's Eric, the first thing. thing. First thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hypotenuse, that's marked in the length. And then we're the so we're done with that, we can help. For us and our three uh, wrapping yeah. it. Yeah. Are holding it probably yeah. need to be three. Yeah. Who's, yeah. who's the wrap team? We're the wrap team. Eric Thompson and I think. Unless uh, other people's are without responsibilities. I mean, the, that wrap, if you, you could start, they could start it from that, that joist wall too, if you know what I mean, just so that they're not the holding up the, yeah. the, uh, the, whatever wall we're working on, you know what I mean, that east wall, and that way we can just, you know. Well, wrapping can happen first thing, right? There's nothing in the way of that? No. So, mm-hmm. I'll drink the wrapping team. Mm -hmm. I'm wrapping. Right. John and Maddie. John, what? It's your last name. John Maddie. Now, yeah, the, right. what's Young the detail? Maddie. Young Maddie. Why you and you? Okay. For the wrapping team, there's one one door on the on the west side. We need to put that piece of OSB on that. Okay. Because there's a hole there. Right. Wait, yeah, you the, need to the cover the, the door side, side, right? There's a door frame on the carport side. side. That's fine. Yeah. And then the well, west side is one more? East is the actual door. The west side is just a hole in the yes. house right now. It's, uh -huh. okay. Okay. It's, not, it's not a door. Oh, yeah, yeah, So, yeah. cover that. Do we have those uh, 9 feet, 10 feet, 8 feet? Well, it should so. be in a pile still. We'll, we'll check that. Mm -hmm. Wood pirates can find it if you need it. <laughs> uh, so, make a note. Wrap structure. So, yeah, there's a detail of... Uh, Close one module. Shoot, so that's going to prevent wrapping from starting? Um, yeah. That, that needs to be the first measurement when we get stacked. So, um, Paul, that measurement we're going to get for the. Don't we have one cut on the east, on the east side? Use that one? There's already one. That was by the door, actual east side door. What about it? No. Use that one. That's that's already a pre-cut piece of OSB, I think. Oh, okay. Which one? There's one that's lying by the east door. Oh, okay, it's on the ground. Yeah, okay. Uh, standing up there. So I think we could just use that. So we have to cut. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else? How many people we got here? Which team? Cut down two by fours. Okay. And for Curtis. anybody who has a job, there's a lot of food left out there. It's cold now, but. Fire up that grill, get a little warm again. Okay. Paul. Paul. C. Which team? Anyway. The tip the red stuff today? Yeah, we'll put him on the rap team. It's just so we can get that knocked out fast. Yo, uh, we don't have a team on uh, on uh, silk plate and drilling concrete. That's also something. Oh, yeah. Before. Well, oh, that, you can that, start the that, team, man. The math team's got to finish that while we're cutting all the wood. I mean, I say we get that modules up and all that, and then we can all collectively go over there. And yeah, but we need the silk plate. Silk plate, just. Uh, that's after marking. So you got to mark it. After you got the mark, you can get the silk plate right in. So um, maybe. Um, Matty, your rep name is marking Mark now. Logan? Did you want to be a part of the measurement? We are measuring. Before the, before the wrapping of the wall? We are measuring. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I think she's talking about for the sill. They're measuring for the ledger 
Uh, yeah, where's Maddie on this map here? Maddie's on the map team. Young Maddie. Oh yeah, young Maddie. What team? Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> That's spelled Y U N E. So what's the measure that no, to happen here, Ledger, Ledger is the big deal. Like, Maddie, get on get on that thing. All right, I'll be on the Ledger. Right, because there's Joyce Cutting and Ledger. That's a big one. Yeah, Joyce Cutting. What's the thing that has to be done before the wrapping can start? Nothing. I thought Close one module. Oh. Close one module. Should be making a installing yeah. Ledger? Yeah, or the Joyce all the way across. Who is doing yeah. that closing? Of the I guess the wrap team? Yeah. Okay. It's on the wrap team. Okay. Close one module. Yeah. Did you get your bacon too? Mm -hmm. So, squaring a structure, what's step number one? It was so good. Get the tape, get all the <laughs> tape measures. <laughs> Joyce cutting is similar. For the ledger, what is the step number one? Like, cut it. Cut it. Measure, cut it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 15, 9 inches. 15, no. 9 inches? No way. 16. Um, 16. Um, these Ledgers are 16. Ledger and end joists are 16. Yeah. All the other joists are 15.9. Yeah, those are ledger and end joist is 16 feet. Because we're putting on siding tomorrow. We're practicing a real build. So we're both practicing. We're going to do siding tomorrow. Because um, at all times you're working out little details that, okay, this actually takes this and this much energy and time and new things that we didn't know since we haven't done it this way yet. Uh, how we place the correct amount of rim joists? Or should we make that calculation how many we need? We said nine. Okay. So nine says it says it right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So maybe emphasize that so we don't miscut, and then two are sixteen foot. And these are the uh, the treated uh, twelve inch ones. Yeah. Those are the ledger and the end joists that are 16. ones we got for the carport, so there's a pile of those. Two or 16, you mean on these edges? Yeah. The so, um, front and back? Okay. And then ledger and are 16. in the front? Zipped in? You, uh, are, you're talking here, and then they're zipped in? No, here we're emphasizing the one that's one inch away from the edge. We're just here, like... It's really like like that there. I was just trying to emphasize that to make sure we remember that we inset the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember insetting the, the one inch. These two that are 16, are they the, the front and back and zipped in? Uh, zipped in as in, well, joist hangers on these. Joist hangers here, joist hangers there. So everybody, joist hangers on both sides of the joists. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I'm. What? No. The only, uh, these two that are 16, are they just to be on, they're, they're obviously, uh, the, the width, oh, wait. they're not, okay, fair enough. 16 for the end and ledger. Getting it to right, but did somebody put, um, oh, okay. end and ledger are 16? I feel like that would help. Yeah, so the two are the ledger, the ledger, and joist ledger. Because I mean, aesthetically, yeah, if, they're, if they're inset on the front one inch, you could put uh, an edge one on it so it just looks sexy on the front. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. But. Um. <coughs> And we could install the... Flashing on a ledger. Kind of flashing on a ledger. So you're inserting the important port? Inside on the ledger. Flashing on a ledger? Uh, as before. It, it can, what it can run in between the ledger and the house. Mm -hmm. and the house. Well, I mean, we're getting the EPDM covering all that the, the before, edge. so yeah. I'm not yeah. saying... Katarina, what's this about flashing on ledger? Oh, that's one thing. These can be mounted as well before people can drop First, it will only drop so they can move on. Probably a lot easier though. Just doing them all in there. Oh, wait, Christian, did we, um, we didn't put joist hangers wherever there's. Okay. So here's a detail. Whenever there's a wall, we don't need joist hangers there because it's resting on the wall. So we do need them whenever they're just hanging in midair. Yeah. Therefore, like I, I, I misspoke here. I said that we need hangers on this side. No, hangers are just here on this side. We just screw them in from the other side because they're already resting on the wall. So we don't need hangers on the red side. Right? right, just like we don't have joist hangers in the roof, um, on the yeah. roof or no, ceiling. I yeah, in the carport we did because we didn't have a wall. I'm a little bit worried now that there's a wall. Talking about here. Yeah. Now that we have the wall, we don't need the hangers there. Okay, so the the joists are sitting on top of that. They are. They are. All right, and then that that flat, that flat, those flat joists sitting in there. What are they going to be? Are we doing another another thing all the way across them for them? To well, the thing is that once you get the plywood on top, which we didn't talk about, right. that's what fixes this whole structure, so right. it can't like do this thing on you. So we didn't talk about that, but that's the last step in which, in which then, case. So just for stability purposes, we need a piece of wood there temporarily all the way across just to have some... Here? Yeah. Well, that was the the end joist, right? Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah. We have an end joist. Okay. I have a question. Uh, yeah? Can we go to slide three? Yeah, hold on. Let me just uh, fix this little detail here, which is make that oh, yeah, even there. Yeah. There's, yeah. Yeah, that's basically and zoom out. So, if we square out this area over here to be 16 feet, that would be the start of the wall modules outside of those or within. But what outside. makes sense outside? Okay. But then the roof joist will be hanging freely above uh, next to the wall modules until we, we put an end joist at the edge, right? So 16 is right there. Yeah. And then so you have no, wall modules uh, at the end. And then you no, it's sitting on the walls. Okay, halfway through or all, all the, the way, way on it. Where do we put the end joist? Attach it right on top of the outside edge of the wall, just oh. like in this picture here. Just like in the house, yeah. So this picture actually shows that. Um, right. So this is the top view. That end joist, but that end joist is inside. Well, this. This is the outside. To the right is outside. In this picture, the end joist is, is, is perfectly above the wall module. Perfectly above, yes. Yes, so the end joist... Uh, on the outside edge of the wall. That's where, that's where it will end up, because you up to 16 feet here. We measured that point, the green point, at 16 feet. Right, and the joists yeah, are. And the rim joists are, are 15, 9 inches. 15, 9. Yeah, okay, then. Uh, yeah. So essentially, it's the same as inside the house. It's just a fix differently. On the joists are resting on something different. Yeah, this is mir mirroring exactly what's happening in the house with respect to a 16 foot span mm -hmm. where the joists in between are 15, 9 because you've got two sides. Yes. Okay. But the end joist is one and a half inch thick, no? 
and not three inches thick. Or the end joist is, is a two by twelve. Yeah, and those two inches are actually one and a half. Yeah. So this gives us three inches to spare. Or is there a distance? Gives us like three inches to spare there. You talking about that? With 15 feet 9 inches rim joists, they would reach. Uh, they would reach so that there is a three inch gap between the end of the wall module and, and the, the, the roof joists. There would be a three inch gap, but and then we're placing a one and a half inch end joist. You already have a, the ledger that's that other one ah. and a half. Yeah. But we, not, um, we are missing the width of the OSB work. That's the only difference. Yeah, we didn't show the OSB. That's kind of we said we'll. We'll attach this this end joist flush flush and by using some OSB strip. The width of the OSB that would be like the house's OSB, and then if if it was a replica of the house, there would be OSB here too. So the width of that is missing, but that yeah. won't throw us off all that much, right? Okay. And I, I think his calculations are Including taking that. yeah okay. into that and in the fifteen. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, because of the the, the plywood, the plywood it's the there. The only difference between that and the plywood. Oh yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, there will be that little thing. Little. So there will be like, if we do that exactly 16, there will be like a half inch overhang. Off the plywood. Off where Off the wall of the, is. Uh, wall mount. Yeah, yeah. So actually, this in detail would be like we would have this. Like right there. Like if you were to extend it, it's yeah. There's that half right. inch. There's that half inch from the plywood that this the end joist is overhanging actually. Details like yeah. There's details like that yeah. But there's it's actually half an inch. Yeah, over. but it doesn't doesn't change how we measure everything nah, else. This, nah, just just, yeah. this is all good. It doesn't matter. You want that? Okay. Mm-hmm. Wait. Doesn't need to be flush. The future expandability portion, why, why not do this? So that you can put your second carport more easily to the right. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Double carport? What are we, rich? Yeah. What? <laughs> your, your kids will grow, they'll want their cars. <laughs> That's true. They can build their own house. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. We'll have a kids compatible one. <laughs> <by then. laughs> Baby port. I yeah. love trikes. <laughs> Marching for the carport door, are we going to cut out the bottom plate or the sill plate? Because right now there's a lift. And there is no sill plate. There's a top plate. There's a sill plate. There's a sill plate. Oh. Okay. That would be door and wall, door and window installation section. We're going to install that on the other house, so we're not worrying about that for this one. Talk about a sill plate. But where should we put the ledger? Top we, want to, we want to align it with the door, so whenever you step out, it's at the right height. So I, think yeah, I, I was talking about the second story door, though. When we talk about we talk about alignment, the ledger is going to definitely be above the door. So we're talking about the second story door, which is more important, because this one here that will be will be probably like a foot or so above. There'll, there'll be ample distance there. Here it's just one and a half inch. And that's, that's for the sill plate on the second floor. And what do you define? We used to have a gap so rain won't uh, amass right by the door. It's just at the surface. Yeah. 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 I understand, but this dimension drives the height of the studs for the wall modules. You need to, you need to know the stack out from all the lengths so how you cut that the right distance. Otherwise, you're going to have the long slope. Yeah, but I don't understand why I we're, think using, why we're not using the wall modules as the component to do that. Hey Logan, you, uh, I think 98.5, which we talked about before, addresses all those issues because it's a four inch slope over... It's a four inch slope. It's a four inch slope. Okay. Okay. That, that, that yeah. yeah, four inch over 16 feet. Standard, 2% minimum slope, yep. Yeah. Yep. So we're not cutting it's out any of the bottom of the floor. What you find, for sure, okay. if there is anything. I'm a little unsure why the end joist now is overhanging the wall module, or was it simply just to illustrate? 
Why is the end joist overhanging the wall module? In this picture we, we, we move the end joist so it's slightly offset or staggered or whatever you call it. Natalie, will you explain this to the man? Let's, yes, please. Uh, it, I shouldn't ask Martian. Yeah, it's always B. It's a, yeah, the, um, so the carport is like a double of what we're doing with the house, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the one difference is that we don't have OSB on that side. You know, it would be like two OSBs together if we did, but we don't. Where? Um, between the house and the carport. Yeah. Because if, if you're like, if you've got what we're doing with the house, and then you replicate that system to do the carport, that would mean OSB on both sides if it was a direct replica, but it's it's not. We're not. As if you bought built another set of wall modules right. on the outside. But, right. but, the, but so we have a ledger counting. that's just. Okay, so right. I think the, the the question here is that when we say 16 by 32, the question is what are we talking about when we say 16 by 32? It's, it's actually the feet. framing. It's framing. Yeah. Now here we have the OSB between outside the, of the house. outside of the house, so that that half inch of the OSB. All right. Is adding one to that set of distance. plywood that's mm -hmm. off the frame. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I was thinking, otherwise we would need to move everything in to have it overhang. But now I understand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I, I, I could have uh, cracked it on my own. <laughs> Thank you for what. I guess it's early in the morning. I only have four cups of coffee. <laughs> Bacon grease. <laughs> <More of it. laughs> so any any questions on this overall thing? We did not talk about the plywood. The plywood would once again be staggered, so no seams lining up, meaning that we would have to cut. Let's actually make that explicit, because we, we do want to put that thing on, so plywood. So let's talk about final thing is the plywood. So we're going to have this, um, how many sheets, there would probably be like eight sheets or so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so this one would actually be down the middle of this one. Does that half inch of missing OSB mess up this process too? No, because we we cut the joists to be uh, to give us the length of 16 okay. exactly. So that'll be the pattern. The pattern will be like this. So we stagger like this. That's kind of. Oh, that's right. Because we have the. That's kind of what we'd be doing. Which means these these sections here will be four feet. These are four footers, and then we just repeat that. That's kind of what we got there. Well, it will go to the it should actually end up exactly at the at end because we've got 59 for the joists and then the ledger. Oh, those aren't necessarily to scale. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. We're not. I'm just doing a rough drawing here, but yeah, it should end up exactly at covering the entire joist system because we made it 16, 16 by 16, and plywood is 8 by 4 by 8. So. Also cover the ledger too, right? Yeah, it does cover the ledger, so the ledger is hidden there, hiding there. Mm -hmm. So, just the only thing to Pay attention to that. I mean, that's east. They just did a renegade bunny, though. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go. Is this so much for Instagram? Everything. I don't know. There was no bunny. 
20,000 people. Yeah, just like yeah. that works. You gotta go behind the shed. All right, so I think that's so that's um. Blast them quick if you want to get. So we got. Oh, man, that's a lot of people just got to kill it too. Of course. Okay, so wrapping up here and wrapping up the recording. Uh, yeah.